Hi, this is Lara. Whoop. <laughs> Hi, this is Lara. Welcome back to day two of the 21 day Facebook Live Challenge through LiveYourMessage.com. And I am Lara Elfstrand of Little Elf Family Services. I am a peace of mind parenting coach. And today I am talking about three strategies that we can use as we teach kids new skills, including sleep. So the first strategy I'm going to talk about today is I call it mood spread. So it's the idea that if it is three or four or five in the morning and I haven't slept, I'm likely to pat the baby, we'll just say a little faster. I'm getting really desperate at this point. And so if I'm at the point where I'm saying, kid, you gotta sleep now. I can't think anymore. I can't focus anymore. You just gotta sleep. That's not very calming. And that calm is something that kids need in order to learn and in order to sleep. So if we get, at that point, we can either tag off with a partner or with a helper. We can look for a way to, I, I used to go to Walmart. I used to put them in the stroller since Walmart where we were at the time was 24 hours. I would put them in the car seat and go to Walmart just to like break the pattern. Um, strategy number two, I call the just right challenge. And so that strategy, I use the ball as an example that for an infant, at first, they're just gonna look at a toy or at their parent. And maybe it's hanging from their car seat, and so they're learning to swipe at it and bat at the ball. And then later they're working on grasping it, but maybe as they're on their tummy, we give it to them because the goal at that moment is just to hold it and to grasp it. And then as the child gets older, we put the ball maybe an inch away and they have to creep towards the ball so that they can get it. Once they can creep towards the ball to get it, we put it more than an inch away six inches and then a foot and then we start to put it further across the room and as the child can get further and further across the room to get it we put it up on a sofa or on a chair that is sturdy so that they can pull up and get to the ball or the toy that they want and have to work harder at it so that's number two the just right challenge and we can apply that with sleep, thinking about how much crying the child has to learn how to sleep and how much crying is appropriate. Because when the, even when the ball is an inch away, the child is gonna fuss a little bit as they're working towards it. But our goal is to build trust and to build persistence and success that gains momentum. And I like to call it, someone at one of the parenting groups that I taught, I think it was at Kaiser actually, um, called it the productive struggle and I really liked that term. So the third strategy we're going to talk about today is called, I call it just playing dumb. And as it says, we're going to pretend like we don't know, We the idea is to wait and give a chance to the child to figure it out, to see what they can figure out if we don't rush in whether it's sleep, whether it's learning how to tie their shoes, or even putting puzzle pieces into a puzzle. I've seen so many parents over the years who, who see, oh, well, this puzzle is so easy. Why can't you do it? And they, they hurry and they do the puzzle for the child. But if we can help them to wait a little bit, because we don't want, in order to build persistence, we don't want to give our child tasks that are so hard that they give up. 
And we also don't want tasks that are so easy that we do it for them and they don't have to work. And so by playing a little bit dumb, and especially when they're not hungry, when they're not tired, we can push them harder. And if we know that they're having a hard day that day, if things have just been challenging lately, then we can hold back and give them tasks that are a little easier because we know that it's just not a time to, to give hard tasks. So our three strategies today were mood spread, the just right challenge, and playing dumb. And our goals were to build persistence and trust and success that gains momentum. We want to use the productive struggle so that our kids have the opportunity to try things and even try things that don't work. One of the things I really look at when kids are doing puzzles, for example, like a, a one and a half or a two year old doing a puzzle is how much can they tolerate do th putting the puzzle in different slots to see where it fits trying the things that don't work, and being a learner. Really, my definition of being a learner has changed a lot over the years. I was a kid who really worked hard to get amazing grades, and it was a lot of sitting. And the other day, I was at a meeting, and my friend and I passed a room full of people and we commented that, oh, they must be learning because they look really bored. But to me, that's not a good way to learn at all. Sitting still in a desk versus trying things and seeing what works. We can learn so much more about the world by our curiosity than listening to lectures. And clearly lectures are more appropriate as we get older and have more ability to sit. Um, but three strategies this week. Mood spread, the just right challenge, playing dumb to build in a productive struggle and make it worth it so that kids have success in small quantities and challenge in quantities that they can handle. So I'm so excited to see everybody watching. Hi everybody, hi Shannon, hi Missy, hi Stephanie, hi Miss D and Carol. It's awesome to see everybody. Um, let me know if this was enough, if this was too many strategies at one time, if you want any more examples, if you have any questions, and I'd love to follow up in a future Facebook Live. I will be live again on Monday, an hour earlier at 2 p.m. Pacific and I will be talking about calm and chaos. So I look forward to seeing everybody then. Bye. Thank you.